Now that we have a better understanding of the probability of individuals being re-identified in our data, we need to consider different options for reducing this risk. Because we want to bias towards sharing data, we consider options that will allow us to share the data while protecting the individuals in the data set, as opposed to simply not sharing the data at all. One option is to apply Statistical Disclosure Control, or SDC, to lower the risk of re-identification in our data before sharing it. Another is to keep the data as it is, but share it less widely and under strict conditions. There are a variety of techniques to reduce the disclosure risk in data. These are referred to as either perturbative or non-perturbative methods. Perturbative methods do not suppress values in the data set, but instead alter these values to limit disclosure risk by creating uncertainty around the true values. If you choose such methods and ultimately share your data after applying them, be sure to make this clear in the data documentation so that downstream users can take into account what you've done when conducting their analysis. Non-perturbative methods, such as recoding and local suppression, aim to reduce the detail in the data without changing the data structure. Through recoding, categories are combined to reduce the number of distinct values of a given variable. For example, we can recode the age variable into age brackets. Through local suppression, certain variables are suppressed and replaced with missing values. For example, we can replace rare key variables with NA. It's important to reassess the disclosure risk and determine whether you've been successful in reducing it after applying these methods. In our case, these simple steps reduce the global risk of disclosure in our sample data to less than 3%, our threshold for sharing data on HDX. The final step in the SDC process is to assess the utility of the data after disclosure control methods have been applied. SDC is always a trade-off between risk of disclosure and loss of data utility. We're trying to maximize data utility while reducing the risk of disclosure to an acceptable level. Data utility is essentially the usefulness and validity of the anonymized data for statistical analyses. Applying disclosure control will always lead to some information loss. In some cases, information loss would be so high that the data loses its utility. This is why information loss must be evaluated with respect to the intended uses of the data. For example, the data from a multi-sector needs assessment must inform effective targeting of assistance to different vulnerable groups. In our example, if we completely remove ethnicity from the data, organizations will no longer be able to understand and respond to the specific vulnerabilities of an ethnic minority. If you determine that the information loss would be too high after applying certain disclosure control techniques, you still have options for sharing the data responsibly. This is when more limited bilateral sharing of the data under clear and strict conditions is appropriate. Consider establishing data sharing agreements and or terms and conditions for different organizations wishing to access your microdata. On HDX, we provide the option to share datasets by request through something called HDX Connect. With this option, organizations can share metadata about their data and then decide to grant access to it on a case-by-case -case basis. We hope that you've found this series of videos useful and that you now feel ready to apply disclosure risk assessment with your own microdata. There are additional resources available via this learning path, including a guidance note on SDC and more technical documentation on SDC Micro provided by the World Bank. We look forward to hearing from you and to seeing you continue to share humanitarian microdata responsibly via HDX. Good luck.